Hello everyone. So in this video, I'm going to um, solve practice problem 13.2 of the book, which is on page 563. And this problem is somehow similar to the problem that um, you have been assigned to do as your homework, which is problem 13.11 from the end of the chapter. So I'm going to go ahead and do this problem. It is kind of similar to that problem, so uh, you can have some idea on how to approach that problem. All right, so in this question, we have this circuit, and uh, we want to determine the phasor currents I1 and I2. As you can see, I1 is the current in the left mesh, and I2 is the current in the right mesh. So since we have a mutual inductance in between, um, we have to go ahead, I mean, we can go ahead and draw the dependent sources to get rid of this dot convention. So we know that for each of these um, inductors, we're going to have a dependent voltage source. All right, so first let's go ahead and let me write these, the components, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, find the polarity of these dependent sources. So uh, here we have current I1, and here I have current I2. All right, so we know that we have to look at these dots that we have near each inductor, right? So for this dependent source here, we know that this dependent source is because of the current that we have, uh, the current that is going through this J2 um, impedance, right? So the current is entering the dot, so we know that at the other inductor, at the dot, we're going to have the positive and then the negative, right? And the same thing is happening for the other dependent source that we have here. But first of all here, we have to pay attention that we're going to have a current over here that we can define this current as positive in this direction that going down which is i1 minus i2 okay so we're defining our positive current passing through this branch that has the j6 impedance as positive which is i1 minus i2 so you can also um, define for example the current this way as a positive direction but then it will be i2 minus i1 right but in this example i'll define it as i1 minus i2 okay so i1 minus i2 is my positive current which is passing through this inductor 6j and we can see that this current is leaving this dot right is leaving this terminal of this inductor so when the current is leaving the polarity at the dot on the other side will be negative, right? So negative and positive. And then the value for each of these dependent sources, as I said, for example, this dependent source is due to the current passing through this inductor, right? So it will be 3J, which is our M, I1 minus I2. And then for this dependent source here, what we're going to have is 3J and then due to the current passing through this inductor, right? So it will be 3J I1. Okay, so now I have a simple circuit and I have all the components and the values so I can go ahead and write the equation for each of these two meshes and then we can find um, I1 and I2. So in mesh 1, which is here, so this is mesh 1, 
and this is mesh two. So I'm gonna write the KVL in mesh one. So I have 100 with an angle of 60. Don't forget that you have to write this angle of 60. It's not zero, so you cannot just write 100. And then this is equal to 5I1 plus J2I1, right? Minus 3JI1 minus I2 and then plus 6J I1 minus I2 minus 3J I1. So this is one of my equations. So then here, if I simplify this equation, I'm gonna have 100 with 60 and then we're gonna write all the coefficients of I1. So I have five plus two J, and here I have negative three J, and then I have plus six J and minus three J, right? These are all the coefficients for I1. And then the coefficients for I2 will be I2. I'll have positive three J here, minus six J, and these two were um, the only coefficients of I2. So the first equation will be 100 with angle of 60 is equal to, so these will be canceled. So I'm going to have 5 plus 2J I1 minus 3J I2. Okay, so this is one of the equations that we were looking for. So as we know, in this question, it is asked to find um, currents I1 and I2. So we're we should have two different equations and two unknowns in order to find I1 and I2. So the other equation that we can write is the KVL in mesh two, as you can see here. So in mesh two, if I start from this point here, I'm going to have positive 3J I1 plus 6J. So this time we have I2 minus I1. And then minus 4J I2 is equal to 0. So again, if we want to write the coefficients of each of um, the I's here, so I1 it will be 3j minus 6j plus i2, 6j minus 4j is equal to 0. Let's see if we did it right. So we have 3j i1 and minus 6j i1. And then for i2, we have 6j minus 4j. So the second equation will be minus 3j i1 plus 2j i2 is equal to 0. Now I have two equations and two unknowns, so I can go ahead and solve these two, equ two equations, two unknowns, in order to find i1 and i2. And the best way to do that is using MATLAB, as we recommended to you um, in class. So let's go ahead and um, let me write the matrix A first. So when you set up the matrix here, you can go ahead and do it in MATLAB easily. Uh, we're gonna upload the MATLAB script there on Canvas as well. All right, so the first equation, the coefficient for I1 in the first equation is five plus two J. The coefficient of I2 in the first equation is minus 3j. The coefficient of I1, oh, and let me finish equation fun first. So I have 5 plus 2j I1, which is here, minus 3j I2, minus 3j I2 is equal to 100 with the angle of 60 degrees. And then in the second equation, I have minus 
3 j i 1 plus 2 j i 2 is equal to 0. So as you can see, I have my matrix set up. So A, and then here I have my B. So when we write this in MATLAB, we can go ahead and find I1 and I2 easily. And then uh, when you find the answers uh, in MATLAB, you should have the same answers uh, when you solve this problem using Multisim. All right, so uh, as I said, we're going to upload the MATLAB script and the Multisim script for this uh, practice problem on Canvas as well. Thank you.